Welcome back, Superstar. Everything that we've talked about so far is foundational information that works for all resumes. In this section, we're going to get into the nuances that are unique to each specific resume type. We'll talk about CVs, chronological resumes, functional resumes, visual resumes, video resumes, and social media resumes. These are all options that can help you stand out from the crowd and help encourage a hiring manager to call you for an interview. For the basic resume types, we'll begin by talking about what a resume is not. It's not a CV or curriculum vitae. CVs are primarily used outside of the United States. And within the US, CVs are mostly used by people in academia or medicine. Similar to a resume, a CV is a summary of your experience and skills. However, it's typically longer than a resume because it includes more detailed information about your academic background and degrees, your teaching experience, the research you've conducted, and your awards and other achievements. To prepare you for the upcoming modern resume options, I want to start by giving you context and by contrasting them with classic resume types. In the upper left section of this circle, you have the classic choice, the chronological resume, where your information is listed in reverse chronological order. Functional resumes are particularly helpful when you're trying to change careers. Sometimes people use these to try to minimize gaps in employment, but skilled recruiters see right through that. The circle's lower left section is for the electronic versions of your resumes. For soft copies, Microsoft Word, PDF, and text files are standard. The advantage of a PDF file is that your formatting stays in place. Computers and printers are unique. They don't all support the same font types, and what looks like two Microsoft Word pages on your computer can print out as three pages on somebody else's, unless you email them a PDF file. Having said that, I don't recommend using PDFs with applicant tracking systems. Now let's go old school for a minute and talk about the hard copy resume. You may ask yourself, why in this digital age would you ever need a hard copy of your resume? Well, they're useful in career and job fairs and in the actual job interviews that you get. Think back to the hiring manager that we saw earlier. He's overwhelmed and has probably misplaced your resume since he first saw it. You can make it easier for the hiring manager by providing a professional looking hard copy of your resume if he or she seems to have lost it. This small act can help illustrate how you can make the hiring manager's life easier. And if you make it easy for the hiring manager during the interview, you'll probably make their life easier on the job too, which makes hiring you that much more appealing. Let's spend a little bit more time on chronological resumes. Personally, I think they should be called reverse chronological resumes because your most recent work history is at the top of the resume and you work your way backwards. I'm often asked by more seasoned job seekers how much of their employment history should they include. The general guidelines are no more than two pages and don't go back more than 10 years, 15 max, because other than problem solving, the skills and experiences that you have back in the day might not be so relevant now. Functional resumes are often used by people who want to change careers or people with employment gaps. You'll see an example of a functional resume in the appendix section of the workbook. Functional resumes have gotten a bad rap because they're often used by people who have something to hide, like their job hopping history. So they can be a pink flag to recruiters. But the truth is, they're terrific when you have a legitimate reason to use them, like you're ready to change your industry or career. If you decide to use a functional resume, be sure to focus first on your transferable skills and then get into your employment history. The last type of classic resume we'll discuss is a hybrid resume, which combines the best part of functional and chronological resumes. You can use your creativity to structure the best resume for you and your situation. Now that we finish with the classics, it's time to go over all these newfangled resumes. Before we dive in, please be aware that these do not replace the classic resumes. Modern resumes are great companions to your classic word-based resume. These new resume options are exciting and visually stimulating, and using them can help you stand out from the crowd in both positive and negative ways. You want to make sure that the culture of your potential employer is receptive to these tools. 
In fields like advertising, graphic design, communications, and video gaming, visual and video resumes can be really well received. In more conservative fields like banking or the law, they may not be. The last thing to keep in mind here is that these more modern resume types are supplements to the classic resume, not a replacement. So still send in your classic word-based resume along with your modern marketing tool. Have you ever seen a visual resume? Here's a simple example on screen. I made this one using the website visualize.me. Why would visual resumes become popular? Well, think about the saying, a picture's worth a thousand words, and then look at all the examples in your real world resume transformations e-guide. Good stuff, right? As you look at this visual resume, note that there are four main sections, contact me, experience, education, and expertise. I partnered with a graphic designer to make this one. Here's another example that was created by a graphic designer. He took a different approach for those four sections. If you're interested in creating a visual resume, I recommend you start with these do-it-yourself websites. Keep in mind the output of these is usually a graphic file that ATSs do not accept. Now on to the Twesame. To appreciate the Twesame, you have to know something about Twitter. Twitter is a social media platform that helps people communicate crisply. Each message, or tweet, is capped at 140 characters. So this is clearly a tool where less is more. When you combine the words Twitter and resume, they form the word Twesame. And when you look at these Twesame examples, you can see the applicants have streamlined their self-descriptions to their most essential skills and traits, which can be a blessing to recruiters who receive countless resumes each day. To get the attention of those recruiters, be sure to include one or more of these hashtags in your Twesame. Twitter is also a great place to find jobs, so you can search on these hashtags that recruiters often use, like hashtag jobs or hashtag job alert. Notice that the words in purple are used by both recruiters and job seekers. I follow a lot of talented recruiters on Twitter, so feel free to check out the people I follow and connect with them directly. Last but not least, we have some very interesting and distinct video resumes for you to review. Instead of showing them to you inside this presentation, you can watch them from the comfort of your own computer. You should be able to access the links on the right side of your screen. Another option is to Google the titles of this video resume. In your workbook, keep track of what you like about each video and what you don't like so that you can incorporate your preferences if you decide to create a video resume yourself. Here are three more video resumes for you to check out. Now that you've seen these video resumes, what do you think? What do you see as the benefits of creating a video resume? And what are the cons? Here's what I see as the pros. While video resumes are definitely becoming more common, they're still unique enough to get the attention of the hiring manager. A good video resume showcases your personality. And if you're the type of person who doesn't interview well, this is another avenue to show who you really are. Video resumes also give you more control than going into someone else's office and being on their turf. Finally, they're more relaxed and informal, which may be more comfortable for you. Here's what I see as potential cons. This informal, unconventional approach might not work for every hiring manager. Also, if you're not used to video, you may not intuitively be able to project the right energy needed to come across as a dynamic and engaging professional. Finally, creating a video can be time-consuming and expensive. If you are moving forward with creating a video resume, keep in mind these tips. A video resume is essentially a commercial for your skills and talents. People tend not to like long TV commercials, so keep this really short and sweet too, ideally no more than 60 seconds. To help with that, be sure to plan ahead. I also recommend that you keep your video G-rated. And creating a good video can be tough to do by yourself, so get the help you need, whether that's hiring a professional videographer or enlisting your friends.